All right, now this, of course, is the big story that we are tracking in Vion, and this is what the world leaders will be looking at very closely. The Chinese president, Xi Jinping, is going to be in Moscow in the next 48 hours, and he's going there to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin. This will be a two-day-long visit. This is first visit by the Chinese president to Russia since the war began last February. The question is this, what is on the agenda? And what is this visit all about? Now, if we go by the reports, this visit is, in a sense, China's attempt at pushing for a peace plan for Ukraine. This visit will see Xi Jinping discuss his plan with the Russian President Vladimir Putin. The question is this, can Xi Jinping convince the Russian President Vladimir Putin to, in fact, pull back from Ukraine? Is there a possibility that this visit by Xi Jinping can actually bring about some kind of a ceasefire? But on the flip side, what happens if this effort were to fail? What if Xi Jinping's plan for peace does not impress Putin? What if the peace talks go down the drain? Could this lead to World War III? Now, this question at this point of time is very troubling because remember, the recent developments that have unfolded in the Ukraine war have, of course, made the possibility of a greater conflict, of the Ukrainian war spilling way beyond its borders is, is a reality that we need to confront with. What happens if there is no peace at this moment? What happens if the war were to spill beyond the borders? Let's take a look at some, some developments that have happened in the course of this week and also what has happened just recently. A report by journalist Seymour Hirsch has stated categorically that America has a plan B for Ukraine, that if the Ukrainian defenses were to crumble, then the American soldiers would, of course, move in to fight the Russians. Secondly, there's also this very disturbing development that has taken place of the Chinese weapons which have now made their way into the battlefields of Ukraine. Take a look at this picture. There are reports that have now surfaced that Ukraine shot down a Chinese-made drone. It's a Mugen 5. It's also popularly known as an Alibaba drone. It is made by a Chinese manufacturer based in the city of Xiamen. These drones are easily available on Chinese websites, including on Alibaba and Taobao. Now, the cost of this drone is about $15,000. The civilian drone was, in fact, fitted and weaponized by the Russian army. And according to reports that have come in, the Ukrainian military units were alerted that an unmanned aerial vehicle was heading towards them. The Ukrainian forces heard the drone overhead. They saw a light blinking. The UAV was flying at a reasonably low altitude. It was close enough to be shot with a gun, with handheld weapons. And the Ukrainian fighters reportedly shot down this drone with an AK-47. That's how they did it. The drone sustained significant damage before it eventually fell down. Now, according to reports, if this is what we are to go by, according to reports from Ukrainian sources, this particular drone was carrying a bomb that weighed nearly about 20 kilograms. The drone has been described as a bit of a dumb bomb. It did not carry a camera with it. Its release mechanism appeared to be made with a 3D printed component. But the explosive that it was carrying was really fatal. The Chinese company Mugen has confirmed that this drone had its airframe. It's also condemned the use of its technology in warfare. Many Chinese companies claim that they've in fact stopped exporting their technology to Russia. But small and nimble drones are still finding their way into the battlefields of Ukraine. And they're providing Kremlin with a very cheap and also very effective way of targeting Ukrainian forces by these drones that cannot be easily shot down. The Russians can in fact use these cheap drones and then flood the Ukrainian airspace and strike targets pretty much at will. This latest drone incident has come at a very interesting and also very difficult time. Now remember, the Chinese president is visiting Moscow and Beijing is going to town with its peace plans. But there is a bit of a contradiction here. If the Chinese weapons are finding their way into the Ukrainian war fields, then what is quite clear is that China is, at least if not actively sending its weapons, then at least it is looking away from those companies that are doing business with Russia and are arming the Russian war machine. The Chinese Foreign Minister, Chin Yang, in fact, spoke with his Ukrainian counterpart. He's called for peace talks between the warring sides. 
Last month, remember, China had published a 12-point plan for a political resolution of the Ukraine crisis. It had urged Russia and Ukraine for a comprehensive ceasefire. This is what it had done last month. And this comprehensive ceasefire plan is attempted to be worked out when the two leaders, Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin, meet. Now, this plan, which the Chinese had proposed, had received a very lukewarm response from both the Russians and also by the Ukrainians. Now, you see, China is offering to broker peace in Ukraine. But its role as a peacemaker is presently under question. Is China really as neutral as it claims to be? The case in point is, of course, its deepening ties with Russia. Remember, just before the war began, on the 4th of February in 2022, 20 days before the war broke out, she hosted Vladimir Putin at Beijing. After the talks, the two sides, in fact, released a joint statement. They declared that China and Russia's bilateral partnership was greater than a traditional alliance and that their friendship will have no limits. So this is effectively a no-limits alliance between Moscow and Beijing. And this is something that has not gone down well with the Western capitals. China has so far refrained from condemning Russia for its war. The West has been imposing sanction upon sanction on Russia. Many Western firms have cut off their connections entirely. As Russia's trade with the Western nations has plunged, China has become by far Russia's most important trading partner. China's overall trade with Russia has, of course, hit a record high of $190 billion in the year 2022. It has jumped up by a staggering 30% in a span of just a year. Now, Russia reportedly exported as much LPG to China in 2022 than it did a year before. You see, trade partnership between the two nations has been better than ever before. China has also been expanding its military production capabilities. It is now the world's fourth largest arms exporter. And what's a better market for weapons than a country that is at war? Because remember, if China can sell its weapons to Russia to be used in Ukraine, because the Ukrainians are being armed by the entire military industrial complex of the West, then this is, of course, a win-win situation for the Chinese defense manufacturing companies. The Chinese drones are an area that Russia would be very interested in. America claims that China is considering to provide weapons to Russia, but the fact is the Chinese weapons could already be in the Ukrainian battlefields used by Russia. This is a pretty difficult scenario. But what everyone is looking at at this moment, as Xi Jinping, of course, travels to Moscow, is that is there a possibility that these two nations could, of course, perhaps come to some kind of an agreement. Can Xi Jinping convince Vladimir Putin to pull back? At this moment, remember, these two nations, Russia and China, share a 4,300-kilometer-long border. If push comes to shove, China will stick by Russia because the United States has earned no favors with China. It has tried to isolate both China and Russia. But the question is, of course, this. Can China prevail upon Russia to somehow try and pull back? Can China make the Russians to get to the negotiating table. This is what we will find out in the next 48, 72 hours. And we'll, of course, be getting, the, getting you the details as they happen. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.